night skies were once filled with stars. Today, our own lights eclipse the darkness and spread steadily each day. Slowly, the dark places in Africa become the last refuge for one of our planet's most iconic animals. Fifty years ago, 450,000 lions lived here, and today, there may be as few as 20,000. And yet, in these remote places, some of the most dramatic stories on Earth are played out. They are harsh, sometimes violent, never malicious, and always real. This is a story of some of the last wild lions on Earth. of this darkness, our story begins. It is an old saga of life lived by tooth and claw. A lioness in perfect condition. It's unusual for a lioness to be without a pride, but she's not alone. She has a mate, her companion and protector, and the father of her cubs. The beginnings of a new pride for this unspoiled land deep in Botswana. Tonight, the bush is uneasy. distant calls they've been hearing for some time are getting closer. It puts them on edge. Invaders, and they suddenly materialize. Lions from the north, forced here by the relentless encroachment of man. They're ready to risk everything to win new territory. Her male has no choice but to fight. It's a battle that could change the bloodlines here forever. determination to win and to stay.
When she finally emerges from hiding, her shoulder almost healed, she's ready to pick up her life. She starts by trying to find her mate. Every sound makes her freeze. Every breath of air brings unfamiliar scents. she finds him, she is a fugitive in her own land. severe. His spirit has gone out of him. He's become old, damaged, broken. His reign is over. There are new rulers now. survive here, she will have to submit to these new masters. But until the newcomers detect her presence, she still has a choice. The swirling air carries a hint of her unfamiliar scent. The hunt begins. She decides to leave, to leave immediately. For she has a secret, all that is left from her old life, a secret that must be protected. This will be her life now, to secure the survival of her cups. With the males behind her, backtracking is impossible. The females of the marauding pride, blocking her escape to the west.
Rita will remember the violent night they last met as vividly as she does. The night she was left battered and bitten, bleeding to death. But she in turn left the largest of them with one eye blinded for life. It's a wound the silver-eyed leader of the pride will never forget. They can smell her tracks. ignites the bush and she's trapped now she must choose north towards the villages and people or south along the fire line to an even more daunting obstacle for her the swollen river in this part of Africa a mother is named after her firstborn as its protector. He was always just a little smaller than the other two. Slower. Prone to getting lost. He must get used to being constantly bullied. It'll either build him up or wear him out. Marditown knows the pride will be coming after her, but what lies ahead is terrifying. Lions detest deep, open water. It hides things that seem unnatural to them. But the options behind are worse. If she stays to fight, the male lions will kill her cubs. It's their instinct to wipe the face of the earth clean of the old male's genes. She must make her decision now. The male cub doesn't hesitate this time. He knows to stay close. His sister wades in more cautiously. But the third cub holds back, scared of the water.
By the time the third cub plucks up enough courage, she's become an easy target, both on the land and in the water. Males turn back into their newly won territory, satisfied that she and her cubs have been expelled forever. The silence is a condemnation. Marditao, the protector, has failed for the first time as a mother. As she turns away, she is turning her back on her past, on the pride that was so desperate to be rid of her. And she steps forward into an uncertain future with her two surviving cubs, the little male and his sister. The battle for the territory has been decided. Ardita and her cubs have escaped to an almost deserted island in the swamp. The only lions on this vast, isolated wilderness called Duba, in the middle of the Okavango Delta. Here, the land is plagued by seasonal floods and rivers that weave through it. If it is a refuge for them, it will be a wet one. A few weeks have passed. Food has been scarce, but there are still no signs of other lions, and they're starting to feel safe at last. The smaller cub has gained renewed confidence by being one of just two cubs now. In his heart, he's a hunter, always ready to explore the endless possibilities that lie in wait for a cub with a restless spirit. close call. He may have thought he so nearly notched up his first kill, but that little hunter's heart did skip a small beat today. The cowardly withdrawal by the elephant confirms that there will be another chance, perhaps when he's a bit older. Till today, she had only time to focus on escape and survival. But now she must find a way to get her cubs safely through their first critical year until they can fend for themselves. And as a single mother, this will take every ounce of her energy and intelligence. The fire and march of human settlements to the north have driven other animal refugees towards the island. Duba is about to change. These are some of Africa's most aggressive animals. Their sharp horns and bone-crushing bosses are perfect weapons, and their massive numbers give them confidence. At the head of the herd is one of the most fearsome of them, 
a scar-faced bull weighing almost a ton. For the past few weeks, this has been her island. The arrival of the buffalo brings hope as possible prey, but also fear. These will be her new enemies on the island. Buffalo are not easy prey. They dislike the sense of lions, and they don't hesitate to attack. so far has been a litany of narrow escapes, one long line of enemies out to get them. A strange way to start life as king of the beasts. With more and more of the newcomers flowing onto her island, Marita and her cubs are destined to run into them again. The herd's pathfinder is now aware that this island has lions, and from now on, he'll always be on the alert. It will be an almost daily conflict, unavoidable in this open, yet confined space. She's not going to be at their mercy. She will have to learn more about this new present. She will have to test them for weaknesses. And she must look beyond the strong outer wall of their heavy armament. expert at finding those weak points. Small hidden chinks in the armor that will stumble out into view and excite her instincts as a huntress. for her. She can hide in the shadows of a crescent moon and let her eyes brighten to take in her quarry.
now she has to become invisible. It is what a solitary hunter does best. damp grass helps her perform like a silent ghost, flitting in and out of reality. Others now battle for the survival of their young. Buffalo desperate to deflect an attack. Lioness eager to double back and strike quick fatal blows to earn a meal for her cubs. It's the eternal dance of Africa. Buffalo calf escapes. It carries a chilling message of a near miss written in blood back to the scar faced bull. It's a race against time. The cubs are demanding more from Maditao as they grow and her milk dries up. The small male doesn't seem to want to compete. But while he bonds with his mother, his sister grows stronger all the time. Her cub's survival is a hard taskmaster for her. And despite the searing heat and humidity, 
she forces herself up again, back onto the path of the buffalo. She seems to understand that the herd will provide if she can just crack that code. She has a fresh tactic in mind. taken up her position, she tries something very sophisticated. A full-on, out-in-the-open, rather desperate charge. It panics the herd. A lion hunt is as much a mind game as it is a physical explosion of violence. What she doesn't know is that the commotion of the hunt has drawn interest from across the river. Silver Eye. strip of water divides them at this point in the river. The intensity keeps Marditao focused, perhaps too focused. Night hides many a bold and sinister thing. Signs of change often come in the slight shift of grass in the breeze or a hint of a scent that brings disturbing news to Maditao. cubs once again stand directly in the path of an aggressive, half-blind lioness and her followers. Marditao's hostile warning buys her time against these huge lions, who present a united force, though lack the confidence of her local knowledge. The cubs understand her body language. They know what to do. This territory is her last option. There is nowhere else for her to go. If she flees from the island, she'll immediately have to face the males patrolling the far bank. And if she were to avoid them, at the horizon, there are people, villages, guns. The river is her defense and her confinement. Her last stand.
This island lives and breathes by a different set of rules to the rest of Africa. Pride has some lessons to learn before they can call it their own. The first is that it's a mistake to sleep too deeply on Duba Island. Especially when a scar-faced bull has smelled the spilled blood of his young. Tao hears the buffalo attack. She pictures the chaos from bitter experience. sound. The crash of water as the buffalo retreat takes on a new significance to her. Water. Each crystal clear splash clarifies an idea. Buffalo flee to water to escape. They use it as a protective barrier between themselves and the lions, and yet they still panic, bunch together and make mistakes. If she can make water her strength, it will be their weakness. Silver Eye has noticed the silent hunter on the move and what she has left behind in the grass. The casual awakening is deceptive. She's giving the huntress time to leave, enough time to get involved in the hunt. Something bothers Mardi Tao for a moment. Some instinct.
But there seems nothing amiss. Beaten, or just deterred for the time being. It's a question that would haunt any mother with vulnerable young driven by conflicting imperatives. To hunt and feed her young, or to stay and protect them. safely in retreat, the young male cub turns his attention to a much greater challenge, like being king of the hill, even just for a moment. For a young lion, being lord of all you survey is almost your birthright. If only one sister would accept it. Winning the high ground is something to fight hard for. But then, when one's opponent unexpectedly gives up, then the triumph of victory feels a little hollow. day she hesitates or fails, her cubs get closer to starving. Another indication of the sheer power of the scar-faced bull and the aggression of all buffalo.
She seems to see the solution to her problem. fighting will keep the pride away. If she can move her cubs up close to the herd, but keep them hidden, they will be safe from Silver Eye, and Marditile will be able to leave them to hunt again. As the herd moves, she tracks them silently. <laughs> 